Okay, so we have our 10 viewers, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on the tutorial. And what I would like to show briefly today is how to, or at least one way to repair cracks in Louis Vuitton canvas. Now, this is a major benefit because as we all know, any of you who uh, follow Louis Vuitton, or most of you assume follow Louis Vuitton, if you're in my group, but um, who really follow restoration and vintage pieces know that once the canvas cracks, it's sort of the death knell for um, being able to bring the piece to Louis Vuitton to have any repair done. So you can have a tiny little crack on the canvas over here and the rest of it be perfectly fine, but Louis Vuitton won't touch the leather because of this. So um, this is not going to open that door back up by repairing it. You're not gonna then be able to go in and say, oh no, look, it doesn't have a crack anymore. But it does open up the ability to purchase and restore a lot of pieces that if you don't know this little tip and trick, you would otherwise say, oh, well, forget it. I can't, that's useless to me because it has a crack in the canvas. They can be quasi repaired. I don't want to say it's a full repair because it's definitely not an invisible repair, but it can be improved, if you will. So I'm going to show that quick little tutorial today. And then another thing I do want to say is that this is not my trick. I did not come up with this. I did most of the things that I show. I didn't invent the wheel. Um, Maybe I like to talk, so I'm good at explaining it, and I've done it a lot, but I didn't come up with this trick. And in fact, I credit um, a couple of ladies in this very group, Jean is one of them, um, who have been doing this for a while. So to them, this is, you know, I'm not stealing your thunder. I know you guys are the ones who's, who've been doing this, but I thought it would be a quick, uh, good little tutorial to show for everybody else who isn't necessarily in all of the Restoration Facebook groups and may not have seen this trick. So... Without further ado, this is our, our victim today, and this is a, and um, it wasn't really, a, it's not a big deal to me, it wasn't a big deal to me, I knew it was a used wallet. Um, so while I was a little bit peeved that it wasn't disclosed, that was not, you know, enough for me to say, oh, I'll just return it, I'm not going to use it. I did use this wallet, I used it extensively for a very long time. The crack never really got worse, um, and as you can see, I mean, it's dirty, it's, been through the ringer. I've used it. Um, I've gotten a lot of love from the wallet and it's never really had a problem. The crack is just an aesthetic thing. And as you can see, it's on an area where near this koala um, snap that when you open and close the wallet, it's always getting bent. So it's not surprising that after time, this little crack would develop. And maybe you can see a little better there if I, if I bend. So it goes all the way through to the little lip, but it doesn't go through the lip. It's just in the canvas over the lip, if if you will. So I hope you can all see that well enough. And, um, you know, it could use a little bit of edge coating on the sides or whatever, but it's not really fatal to the use. But I thought, now that I know this little trick and that I've been doing this little trick for a while and can demonstrate it, I thought I would show you guys how to go about fixing that so that it's less visible. Now, it's not going to be completely invisible. If I was working with a monogram piece and the rip was in the monogram without going through um, an LV, then this repair would be a lot less visible only because of the coloration. So, I mean, you could play around with different colors of edge coat and try to match the light brown. Um, I'm not going to do that because it's really a small crack to begin with, and I don't really feel like it's going to stand out once it's repaired. Um, but you could fool around with different colors of edge coat to try to achieve, you know, a light brown, dark brown, perfect match. So it's not going to be completely invisible once I'm done, but it's going to be a lot better and hopefully prevent that crack from getting worse. And again, if you had a monogram piece, it would be an even nicer looking repair because you wouldn't be able to see it um, at all. So here's what I need. I'm going to tilt you guys down so you can see my workspace instead of my face. So I have uh, the victim, and I do have this facing towards me because it's a very it's a small crack, and I really need to be able to see. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I wear my glasses when you guys um, watch, but I have my contacts in today, which means I can't see unless it's right here. So I do have to have it tilted down. But what I need is um, edge coat. I use the Feebings brand, but any brand of edge coat. Now I have tried this with the Dura Edge. And for whatever reason, it does not want to work as well as the plain edge coat. So I have the edge coat in brown right here. Um, I have a fast drying crazy glue. Um, you can use the 
E E uh, E three thousand or E six thousand or leather cement. Um, I'm impatient, and I found that this works just fine on small little cracks. I have a tiny paintbrush. I might not use it, um, but I have it in case. And then I have my favorite tool for doing this, which is actually uh, it's full of dye. A lobster ex meat extractor. <laughs> um, one would use this if you're eating like crab legs or lobster to get the meat out from inside. But I find it's perfect for getting the material right down into that little crack without getting it any excess material, excess um, edge coat on the rest of the canvas. And then I have the most important tool that you need for this job, which is a heat tool. Now this is my heat tool. It's just a like celebrate it from Michael's heat gun. Um, I've had this for years. I use it for a ton of crafts. Um, so you can use a heat tool like this, or you can use the type of heat tool. Um, they make one, and it's like used for um, wood burning, and it's like a stick, metal stick. I'm not good at describing this. It's like a metal stick, and the metal stick itself gets hot to the touch, and then you touch the hot metal to the spot. Um, but I have this one already and I'm cheap so I didn't go buy a new one this one works just fine so if you have something like heat gun I don't think a hair dryer is going to get hot enough to um, melt the edge coat to the canvas so um, I do recommend that if you don't have this it was only like $15 it wasn't super expensive I'm not really sure how much the wood burning tool version is um, but you do need a heat gun Okay, so before I do it, I'm going to describe what I do because I might be quiet while I'm working and concentrating. Oh, and I have baby wipes, you know, in case I make a mess everywhere. So um, before I do it, I'll describe to you what I'm doing. I'm going to take the crazy glue first and sort of seal up this tiny little crack. And I'm just going to push the edges together and hold it there for about a, a 30 seconds and let that sort of set up because you have to glue it first to sort of keep the two edges of canvas together. If you just try to fill it with the edge coat over time, those two areas are just going to split back apart. But wait, if you glue it first, it'll keep those together, you know, more permanently. And then the edge coat just seals it over the top. So you always want to glue it first. And in fact, if you have um, big holes, um, you can use this technique to fill big spots of missing canvas. It's obviously going to be more, much more noticeable if you do. Then you definitely want to fill that like bare spot first with either um, leather cement or leather glue. You don't want to just um, try to fill the bare spot with the edge coat because it's going to end up being a mess. So what I'm just doing is dabbing very, very slight amount of the fast drying glue into the crack. Um, and I know you probably can't see that very well because I am trying to work closely, but I'm trying not to get it on the canvas. And then I'm just pushing the two sides of the crack back together. And I just have to hold it like this probably for about, like I said, about 30 seconds. Okay, so that looks to be dry. Yes, it is. Okay, so now we have the crack. And it's basically s now stuck together, but it's not gone. You can still see the line, obviously, there from where the crack is. So this is where the new, new, new to many people um, trick comes in. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your edge coat. First, close your plate crazy glue so you don't, you know, glue yourself to the table because that's something I would totally do. Um, you're going to take your edge coat. Now, one thing I don't like about edge coat is that it is very, very messy. It's thick, it's viscous, and it's sticky. So you want to try to not get it on everything. So what I do is I take my little lobster tool, and I dip it here into the edge coat, and then just get a little bit here on the tip. And then I come over the crack. And again, I apologize that you guys probably can't see this as well as I would like. But you're going to take it and just dab it over the crack. You don't want to be excessive with this. This is sort of a less is more because you can always come back um, and add, but you, it's not as easy to take away. So very, very lightly. 
and it's sort of like you're filling in the line, okay? Um, and that's all it takes. So I'll show you what that looks like there on there. So you see that brown, shiny area is where I filled it in. Okay, so now you're going to take your heat tool and you're going to apply heat and that edge coat is going to melt down into the crack and sort of seal it up. This is going to be loud, so I give everybody a second to turn down their volume because it's going to be loud for about 10 to 15 seconds. And I apologize, it's just a loud tool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and literally I'm just going to hold it to it. Okay. Okay, so I held that heat tool there until the um, edge coat no longer looked wet. Uh -huh. That doesn't mean it's completely dry yet. Um, and just be careful, um, your, bag, your bag is going to be hot. You don't want to burn your bag. You don't want to um, um, torture Vachetta if you're doing this on a monogram, sorry. But you do want to get it hot enough that it sort of melts the edge coat down in. So here you have it. Okay. And if you look now, you do not see the crack anymore. Okay, so you can tell that a repair was done. It doesn't look perfect. It doesn't look like it's new out of the store, obviously. But you also don't see a crack. Um, Okay, and like I had said, you know, if you're doing this on um, monogram canvas, the edge coat just matches in a little bit better. I'm OCD, so I can, you know, I'm like, well, it doesn't completely match 100%. I, I mean, I can tell that it's been repaired, but it looks a lot better than the crack. And if you hold it like this, you can sort of see, I almost want to call it like a scar. You can sort of see where there had been something. Um, but you can fill a lot of cracks with this method and improve, you know, the look of a lot of bag. I would never not disclose that that was done, but it really just makes a big difference in, in bags that have a lot of cracking, especially like t things that tend to crack um, up along the top of edges. You see a lot of cracks on things like this across the top where it bends. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot you can do with this technique to fix a lot of different cracking on a bag. Um, so there you have it. I do have, um, and that's it. I mean, you can go use this right away. You don't have to wait. You don't have to uh, let it dry any further. The um, heat gun pretty much sort of almost like solders it into place, for lack of a better word. Um, but you can go use this right away. And in fact, um, the reason that I had taken this out to look at it and to fix it and show you guys was because I'm going to be listing it like in probably 20 minutes on the Facebook group because um, I just haven't used it in quite a long time um, and I wanted to fix it before I went to go sell it so I'm going to touch it up a little bit more and then I'll have it listed up because it does need a little bit of edge coat on the sides but that's besides the point I'll, I'll um, list it properly with you know all the um, name tag and prices and all that but you can really um, open up a whole new, you can open up a whole new segment of bags that, you know, you might otherwise not want to buy, you might not want anything to do with. I know myself, when I'm um, looking to purchase, before I learned this trick and sort of started practicing it and working on my technique doing it, before I had um, done that, if I saw any type of cracking on a bag, I would automatically, oh no, I'm not going to buy that thing. I mean, it's ruined, you know, but it's not really because you can fix it. <laughs> you can't make it perfect. You can't take it into Louis Vuitton and get repairs done on it, but 
it's still a perfectly usable wallet that now does not have um, a big crack in it that is potentially going to get worse. So I actually do have about 10 minutes for questions if anybody wanted to ask any quick questions. Um, and if not, I will sign off. Thank you all for tuning in. Bye.